Welcome to the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast, where we connect Asian Canadians together to talk about anything related to real estate, mortgages, and finances, based out of Vancouver. Our host is John Lee, mortgage broker with Arise Mortgage. Grab a bubble tea and enjoy the episode. We're diving into a topic that I usually get asked about, which is what's the difference between getting a mortgage from a bank versus a mortgage broker? And this is part two. So if you missed part one, go back to episode four and check out why you should get a mortgage from a bank. So for this episode, I'm going to talk about why you should work with a mortgage broker. So let's do this. So why should you work with a mortgage broker? So first off, there's a variety of lenders that we can choose from. So as a mortgage broker, we just act as the middle person between you and multiple lenders. We have access to a broad range of mortgage products from uh, different banks and other financial institutions. So places like banks, credit unions, mortgage companies, and these mortgage companies, they just strictly do mortgages. And you may not know them because they don't have any branches and they rely strictly highly on mortgage brokers to provide them with business. We also do uh, alternative lending and private lending as well. We basically do the shopping for you. That's not it. Um, On top of that, if there are issues with getting approved, we can quickly approach another lender immediately. So in situations like working with Business for South, or if you have Bruce Credit, or some wrinkles on your income reporting, we may be able to still find a solution for you, even if your bank declines you. So next one is personalized services. So Marie, as a mortgage broker, we need to provide you with better service. We are paid on commission, so we don't get paid unless the file is funded, which also means you need to be happy with what you're getting. We're able to tailor the mortgage solutions uh, for you. And we are not restricted to branch hours. We work when you're not working, (laughs) usually. So usually like evenings and weekends, uh, if you are looking to put in an offer, that's usually when a broker comes in really handy because uh, you will have to figure out whether or not you can get approved and you want more confidence in your offer. Where most of the time, if you contact your branch, you know, after five, they're closed and you may lose the deal because your offer might not be as aggressive because you're too concerned about financing. So bottom line is we're on commission and we just tend to work extra hard to get the file done. Now, on the other hand, banks, usually the employees, they get paid a salary. So regardless of whether they go the extra mile, or they just do the bare minimum, or even they don't even return your call, uh, they still get paid every two weeks. So that is the difference. The incentive is there to ensure that you're happy with the service and we get the job done. Next is we have specialized knowledge. For mortgage brokers, we have specialized knowledge and expertise in mortgages. And uh, we are able to navigate Lots of different complex situations, uh, such as if you're self-employed or have less than perfect credit. And this is also the only thing that brokers do. Like we don't do investments. We don't open accounts. We don't do GICs, only mortgages. So we get paid by commission, but not only that, hoping that we do such a good job that you will be able to refer your friends and family to us. So for me, in general, my approach is a more holistic approach. I just don't, I don't just talk about mortgages. Although, of course, that is a big part of why you're talking to me. But on top of that, uh, I would also discuss about your investments, how to minimize your taxes, I will connect you with a financial planner to ensure that your goals for say your retirement uh, or tax planning, that's all intact. So 
I want to make sure that if I'm able to uh, help you with a mortgage, you're also future proofing yourself so that you won't be incurring penalties or fees in the future. And that's how I execute the plans for you. Next would be fees. So while some brokers, they charge a fee for their services, many are compensated by the lenders they work with. So it's important to clarify how your broker is paid to understand any potential costs involved. So brokers represent you and generally you don't need to pay for the services. So as long as your mortgage is funded by a traditional lender, like a bank or credit union, then the fee is not your responsibility. And there are times where brokers will need to charge a fee and it's likely because it is a alternative lending file or private lending. So for those type of files, the lender doesn't pay. So therefore they will need to uh, charge a fee. Now we, we do also offer a lot of ongoing support. So most of the time, like bank employees, they would jump around and they'll get promoted. And after five years, you're, like your banker may be gone. <laughs> but maybe still at the bank, but just a different position. And for brokers, this is, again, this is all we do. It's our business. And if we're successful, we're going to stick around to support you year after year after your mortgage is funded. So you don't need to be too concerned about after the transaction, uh, you're just kind of left on your own. I hope I'll still be here to support you. And that has been the case. I have been helping clients over five years ago where I helped them with a mortgage and then now I'm helping them with the renewals. And also within those five years, I've been answering some questions like you know, prepayments or calculating whether or not they should lock in their variable rate to fix and so on. So there, there's a lot more support with a mortgage broker. So just to wrap things up, whether you choose to go with a bank or a mortgage broker really depends on your unique situations and preferences. So both options really, they, they do have their advantages and what works best for one person may not be ideal for another. So just take your time to research interview bank, interview a mortgage broker, ask questions, and consider seeking advice from a financial advisor as well, just to ensure that you're making the best decision. And perhaps maybe they know a mortgage broker that they could refer you to. Because the home buying, it, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And there's a lot of steps. It can be quite overwhelming. You got to really find someone who you really want to work with that you're comfortable with to guide you through this journey. So thank you for tuning in to today's episode. And we hope that you found this discussion helpful and informative. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to reach out until next time. I'll see you in the next episode. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving us a review and subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Asian Connection Mortgage Podcast.